Before we go on to actually fly the approach, we need to have some idea as to, uh, if you like, the topographical uh, layout and also the vertical layout of what we're going to fly. In terms of a standard approach and ILS, all we're going to look at really is the ILS and how to position for it and subsequently fly it. However, we still need to have some indication as to what we're going to do. Now, with VATSIM, for example, you can quite often get good controllers who will vector you uh, to the approach fixes using their radar, and they can set you up really nicely for the, uh, for the actual ILS. However, we also have to be ready for the fact that we might not be able to do that. Uh, there's quite a lot of resources online available for free uh, instrument approach information and departure information. And this is an example, it's the uh, National Air Traffic Service for the UK Aeronautical Information Service. Um, as I say, it is free. The idea obviously is safety, so that pilots from anywhere in the world can get information for anywhere in the world that they might fly to, um, as long as they've got an internet connection. This is for East Midlands, EGNX. Uh, it's an airfield I became familiar with doing my instrument flying uh, rating, because it's one of the airfields that we used as a, as a test venue. Um, and fortunately for us, it was one that we tended to use radar vectors for, so the air traffic control would vector us in uh, ready for our approaches. However, as you can see from this, this is the initial approach procedures, and it, it, up on the top left it points out it's runway 27 without radar control, and we're going to fly to runway 27. But this isn't all about flying the star, which is this bit here. What we're going to do is we're actually just going to join it uh, here at approximately 36 miles from Daventry on the DME, uh, which is D36 and you can see this little block here with the line above and the line below that basically means it's 4,000 feet at that point no higher and no lower and then it continues 38 miles from the Daventry uh, VOR which is down here 116 decimal 4 we'll turn left uh, and then we will basically head on 270 to East Midlands uh, NDB uh, echo Mike Echo uh, and that will be our initial approach fix and there's a hold there uh, not below 3,000 feet and then you can see further out to the west we've got the actual airfield. So zooming in a little bit we've got the initial uh, the instrument approach chart I should say so we're coming in from our initial approach here uh, and this is our beacon that we would potentially hold over it's also called the initial approach fix for the actual approach itself now very nicely what they do is they do a vertical profile at the bottom half which is generally depending on the manufacturer of the charts but it's you can see it's generally lined up vertically with the approach procedure you're going to fly so we're going to come over our initial approach fix at 3,000 feet basically their normal procedure here from the initial approach fix you can see there's two uh, lines here two uh, routes um, the first one the thin one is the hold so that would be if you're holding above uh, echo mic echo and you'd fly that in a, an anti-clockwise direction the other one you can see it's uh, high well not highlighted but it's got a bolder line going around here and you can see that it goes from the initial approach fix it goes left hand turn rate one turn onto heading a 090 or to a track of 090 i should say out to 8.2 miles on the dme which is from the india echo mic echo dme um, and then it's left hand turn to intercept 270 and then towards the airfield this gives us the vertical profile so we've gone overhead the India uh, sorry the echo mic echo we do a left hand turn to 090 as we do so now we can descend on the 090 path down to 2000 feet which is our platform altitude not below 2000 feet and then once we complete our turn 8.2 miles from the DME we would be maintaining uh, 2,000 feet not below until we get to the uh, descent point here which is 2,000 feet and that's where we intercept the glide slope uh, three degree three degree glide path and then we would continue down heading 270 you would use this point here um, it's got GP 1660 or 1378 uh, it would be 1660 as your altitude and that's your checkpoint so as you go over the NDB a second time so you go over it once as you're going to go outbound and then you turn around and you come back in so first time here and then your second time coming this way as you're on the uh, approach you're looking to maintain 16 you're looking to pass sorry 1660 feet at that point which is 4.1 miles on the DME you can see it's quite complex and then descending 270 continuing down um, things you need to be aware of are going to be uh, with the uh, ILS is going to be the decision height the decision height in this example is going to be uh, 200 feet um, we're not flying uh, cat 2 or cat 3 approaches this is just a straightforward cat 1 approach 
Okay, so the mist approach, um, if we have to fly it, basically we get to our decision uh, height. Now one of the things you look at here is your threshold elevation up here is 282 feet, so we'd expect it to be 482 feet altitude uh, is our uh, decision altitude in effect, but our decision height is 200 feet. We may not, in certain aircraft, have a radar altimeter, so we'd look at 482 in that case on the barometric altimeter. Um, so the actual mist approach itself would be to climb straight ahead you can see straight ahead here on a bearing of 270 um, and you're looking to climb to 3000 feet or 8.8 .8 miles in the India Echo Mike Echo, the, the DME range from the uh, ILS, uh, whichever is earlier and then you turn right back towards the NDB um, at 3000 feet or as directed by ATC but obviously you will have informed ATC at this point that you are going around but anyway, now it's time to fly the approach and see how we get on. Hi guys, you join me here as um, we're heading away from the Daventry VOR uh, towards our um, final destination, East Midlands. Uh, we're tracking 007 away from Daventry and you can see down the bottom here we're 35 nautical miles away from Daventry. Now we discussed earlier that we were looking to be 4,000 feet uh, at 36 miles and we are 4,000 feet. I've got it on automatic pilot at the moment just out of the fact that this is a fairly uh, dull sort of transit period at the moment so I don't really particularly want to be too excited about it and it reduces the workload initially. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn left at 38 miles on the DME. Before we do that I'm just going to set the heading bug to 300. The reason is that will give me a nice intercept heading for the ILS. Uh, the ILS inbound course is 270. You can see here the yellow is the ADF needle, the green is the uh, VOR for the uh, ILS. A <coughs> couple of things to do first really. The first is we're just going to ident that we've got the right, uh, the right beacon. So that's the India Echo Mike Echo. Uh, it's quite useful on the charts you can see it gives you the uh, the dots and dashes rather than having to uh, to mess around identifying your own beacons through uh, Morse code. You can identify the beacons using Morse code but they basically tell you what it is. So we're looking to turn left at 38 uh, nautical miles from Daventry. And the other thing we need to do just while I think about it is okay so we're on to heading. Uh, our inbound course is 270 so we'll just turn that to 270 We'll swap this over and just make sure we've got the same ident, which should be dot 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 dash dash dot. And it is, so let's turn that off because that will become irritating otherwise. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to uh, descend down to 3000 feet, so we'll start the descent to 3000 feet, we'll bring the power back considerably. We do get the gear up warning light, but uh, I'm not too concerned about that because at the moment we're not actually uh, too close to the ground and we're not looking at our landing configuration at the moment. But we'll get down to uh, 3,000 feet fairly swiftly. The uh, course deviation bar is coming in, so we're going to turn left and try and intercept that. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me if I clear my throat every now and again. I've got a bit of a, a cold which has been hanging on for the last few weeks, get rid of the flight director, I don't particularly like that because uh, it obscures the view of what we're doing. Um, and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to just move the bug on to 090 and that's my reference heading for outbound. And we're going to turn outbound when we pass over the NDB and you can see the NDB is this little yellow needle. Now it's going to start to move quite significantly as we get fairly close um, and as we get fairly close we're going to want to uh, to avoid, if you like, the large changes of heading that we'd need to maintain it. So uh, we're just going to maintain about 110 knots now, just bring the power back up. We'll level at 3,000 feet. Now the, the uh, NDB is 4.1 miles from touchdown, so we'd expect it to start to get a bit lively any moment now. Uh, just a little bit more power to maintain 110. <coughs> What, I, what I'm going to do is once we go over the top of the NDB I'm going to start flying manually at that point. Okay, you can see the needle starting to move a little and now it's starting to move a lot and uh, it's showing that at uh, 5 miles because actually we're uh, we're above the... Uh, there we go, the autopilot's out. We're above the um, beacon by probably the best part of uh, a mile almost at this point. Well. 
th two thirds of a mile and so that's why it kind of um, overreads if you like how far you are when you get to the NDB uh, the NDB obviously is an indicator that when the needle sweeps through uh, you are directly over it now one of the things we need to be aware of is the uh, principle of a rate one turn rate one turn uh, allows us to turn 360 degrees in two minutes uh, 180 degrees in a minute um, and the guidelines for that are your speed divided by 10 plus 7 give you your angle of bank so we're currently doing 110 knots so we'd expect 18 degrees angle of bank as a result uh, and we're looking to maintain 3,000 feet until we're around the turn and then we'll descend down to 2,000 so we're looking fairly stable at the moment which is remarkable for my flying and we'll see if we can maintain this as we go down the ILS <coughs> Now what we're going to do is fly this outbound till 8.2 miles on the DME, uh, descending initially to 2,000 feet. So as we get towards 090, because I'm going to roll wings level, anticipating uh, our position. And now we're descending. Take a bit of the power off. Get the gear up indication as well. I'm not too worried about that because I know that the gear is up. Okay, so we're descending 090. We're looking for 8.2 and to be at 2,000 feet for that. So we've got 110 knots. I think 600 feet per minute is a good rate of descent down. Um, one of the things when we're inbound is we need to look at our ground speed. Our ground speed divided by 5, uh, or sorry, times by 5, gives us our uh, rate of descent we should be looking at. So if we've got a ground speed of 110 knots, we should be looking at 550 uh, feet per minute as a rate of descent. I'm going to look to do the approach at about 100 knots, so um, that should give us adequate um, speed, if you like, beneath the uh, the top of the white arc, so we're not going to risk our flap limiting speed, um, but likewise it will give us enough speed uh, that we're not going to be too concerned about uh, too concerned about a stall. There's a couple of speeds that are useful on the uh, on the speed uh, airspeed indicator. You can see a couple of them. The blue line. Uh, is the uh, best rate of climb speed for single engine uh, a very uh, sorry yeah for single engine so it's a very important speed to fly at um, and the red line is what's called the MCA that's the minimum control speed in the air so if you were um, looking at uh, the worst possible scenario that's as slow as you can fly with a single a twin engine aircraft only using its single engine and still maintain some form of adequate directional control. So 8.1 miles, I'm going to uh, just anticipate it slightly here, bring a bit of the power back on from our uh, descent. We can't go below 2,000 feet, uh, certainly when I did my instrument rating uh, it was between the height and uh, 100 feet above, so I'm just going to try and maintain my 2,000 feet. Now as I come around the corner I'm going to try and intercept my inbound heading for my uh, ILS we always uh, aim to intercept the localizer first. Uh, the main reason for that being is that the lateral um, sort of uh, azimuth, if you like, is uh, is more important for uh, obstacle collision in the early stages, and then in the latter stages, obviously, height becomes more important. The other thing is we always intercept from beneath the um, the glide slope because you can get false indications. You won't get it in FSX, but in real life, you can get false indications if you are above the glide slope. Um, Basically, it's just down to how the uh, the radio waves propagate from the beacons. But you've got the course deviation indicator coming in. Now, strong temptation is to increase the rate of turn to uh, to try and snatch that. But one of the things you've got to avoid is uh, is turning too tightly. As I say, all instrument turns are um, rate one at most. You never do anything more than rate one. However, that's lining up nicely. So now all we're waiting for is our descent point. Our descent point for this. Uh, is at 5.2 on the DME so uh, we shouldn't really be descending until then now the important thing now is to make small corrections as opposed to big corrections um, because we're flying a very precise approach as a, an ILS the tolerances are very small so it's all about nudging the instruments into uh, where you want to be so there we go we've just got about five six degrees to the right of our um, course deviation bar and we're waiting for our glide slope to come in you can see it started coming in 
so with half to go I'm going to go gear down first stage of flaps and because of the flaps it will want to uh, will want to balloon slightly but because of the gear it will want to slow down so we'll add a bit of power and we'll aim to do our approach at about uh, 100 knots now we are below glide slope so let's just try and recover that a little bit here it comes yeah we did go 100 feet too low so that uh, in an instrument rating test that would have been a fail but fortunately we're not in an instrument rating test so now we're within tolerance for the tests you would be expected to fly within uh, half a division uh, up or down so the first tick mark above and the first tick mark below you'd be expected to fly to that tolerance now we're just going to slow to 100 knots and in doing so we should be aiming for a 500 feet a minute rate of descent so we've got just about 500 there we want slightly less because we're below the glide slope Uh, we're going too fast really, let's take a bit of power off and get ourselves down to 110 knots and try and get down to 100 knots which would be our 500 feet per minute rate of descent ok so we're nicely on the glide slope, we just need to uh, reduce our, uh, sorry, increase our rate of descent slightly now our decision altitude was 482 feet so uh, we've got about a thousand feet to go now need to increase our rate of descent because we're uh, above glide slope obviously we don't want to do it ridiculously fast there we go back on glide slope still slightly fast for where I'd want to be now this is the point where it starts to concentrate the mind somewhat take a little bit more power off so as I say it's all about small corrections you don't want to be doing great big ham-fisted movements got just over 500 feet to go Three hundred feet to go. Two hundred feet to go. One hundred feet to go. And we're visual, so decision is to land, taking full flap. and looking to maintain 95 knots without wallowing and pitching this thing all over the place slightly high on the visual approach slope indicators but we're in a light twin so we should be able to recover that fairly nicely and taking the power off gradually a nice easy flare wings level and there's a nice uh, landing from which we would roll out and uh, then continue our way to the terminal. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that, found something useful out of it, and uh, I shall speak to you soon. Take care.